So let me get directly into the uh, presentation. Uh, the agenda today is we will first talk about the incidents um, which cause medical errors and the importance of reporting near miss. And I also touch upon the punitive culture and just culture. Why is it important to have a good culture if at all you want the um, reporting, incident reporting to go up? And finally, I'll round it off with uh, just pointing out the eight steps to implementing a good catch program in your hospital. Now, I wanted to start with this story. This is a story of a one and a half year old child called Josie King. And this girl died of dehydration because of a wrongly administered narcotic. There was a series of other errors, but the final blow came because of a wrongly administered narcotic in no other hospital than Johns Hopkins, which is one of the reputed centers of excellence. And they learned from this uh, mistake and, and now have successfully implemented and also helped implementing this comprehensive unit-based surgery uh, safety program, CUSP, in their own hospital and, the, and hospitals and various hospitals in the USA. So I wanted to you to share uh, this uh, video of the mother. But before that, let me just uh, stop sharing and put the video on. Just excuse me for a minute. Okay, here we go. Um, let me just go to the video. And it's about two minutes. So now I request your patients to go through this uh, video. My daughter Josie died a year and a half ago at Johns Hopkins due to medical errors. Not only do I represent Josie, but I also represent all of the other children, the mothers, the fathers, the sisters, the brothers, the 98,000 people who die every year in this country from medical errors. I'm here for them, for their families, and for any future potential victims. I would like to share my story with you. I do this with the hope that what I'm about to tell you will make a difference in how you care for your patients and how strongly committed you and your hospital are to patient safety. Josie was 18 months old. She had brown eyes and light brown hair. She loved to dance and had just learned to bounce on the trampoline with her older siblings, Jack, Relly, and Eva. She had just learned to say, I love you. In January of 2001, Josie was admitted to Johns Hopkins after suffering first and second degree burns from climbing into a hot bath. She healed well and within weeks was scheduled for release. Two days before she was to return home, she died of severe dehydration and misused narcotics her central line had been taken out. I began noticing that every time she saw a drink, she would scream for it, and I thought this was strange. I was told not to let her drink. While a nurse and I gave her a bath, she sucked furiously on a washcloth. As I put her to bed, I noticed that her eyes were rolling back in her head. Although I asked the nurse to call the doctor, she reassured me that oftentimes children did this and her vitals were fine. I told her Josie had never done this, and perhaps another nurse could look at her. After yet another reassurance from another nurse that everything was fine, I was told that it was okay for me to sleep at home. I called to check in two times during the night and returned to the hospital at 5.30 in the morning. I took one look at Josie and demanded that a doctor come at once. She was not fine. Josie's medical team arrived and administered two shots of Narcan. I asked if she could have something to drink. The request was approved and Josie gulped down nearly a liter of juice. Verbal orders were issued for there to be no narcotics given. Meanwhile, Josie started perking up. She was more alert and had kept all the liquids down. I was still scared and asked her doctors to please stay close by. At one o'clock, the nurse walked over with a syringe of methadone. Alarmed, I told her there had been an order for no narcotics. She said the orders had been changed and administered the drug. Josie's heart stopped as I was rubbing her feet. Her eyes were fixed and I screamed for help. 
I stood helpless as a crowd of doctors and nurses came running into her room. I was ushered into a small room with a chaplain. The next time I saw Josie, she had been moved back up to the PQ. Doctors and nurses were standing around her bed. No one seemed to want to look at me. She was hooked up to many machines and her leg was black and blue. I looked into their faces and said to them, you did this to her, now you must fix her. I was told to pray. Two days later, Jack, Relly, and Eva were brought to the hospital to kiss their beloved Josie goodbye. Josie was taken off of life support. She died in our arms on a snowy night in what's considered to be one of the best hospitals in the world. Our lives were shattered and changed forever. Josie died from severe dehydration and misused narcotics. Careless human errors. Josie's death was not the fault of one doctor or one nurse or one misplaced decimal point. It was the result of a total breakdown in the system. It was the result of a complete lack of communication between the different teams. It was the result of doctors and nurses not listening to a concerned parent. It was the result of a combination of many errors, all of which were avoidable. What if the nurse had called the doctor when Josie's eyes were rolling back in her head? What if she could have had a drink or had been hooked up to an IV? What if the residents had paid attention and seen that her weight had dropped over 15% in 24 hours? What if the nurse had not given her the methadone? What if someone had taken my concerns seriously? What if a patient safety program had been in place? I believe that if any one of these things had occurred, the outcome could have been different and Josie would be here today. Every time uh, I hear this, it moves me. And though many of us probably say we have a patient safety program in our hospitals. Many of the incidents which happen, you know, go unnoticed and many times underreported. So this is what happened in the, you know, one of the reputed hospitals of the world. So here is the WHO statistics of low and middle income group countries. That is where India is part of. And here one in four patients are harmed due to deficiencies in patient safety and more than 134 million adverse events occur annually because of unsafe errors in hospital, contributing to 2.6 million deaths. So that is the state of affairs as of today. Nothing has changed almost 20 years since uh, the patient safety movement came into force uh, with the Institute of Medicine's publication to err as human. There's no, because people uh, they don't sort of own up and report these errors. So if you look at incidents causing medical errors, we can uh, classify them as, as patient harm, no harm, and near miss. And near miss is also called as a good catch. So that's where we are coming to. So patient harm has reached the patient and resulted in harm, and sometimes in death of a patient. The second one, we are lucky that it has reached the patient but it didn't result in harm. Near miss is it is caught before it reached the patient and harm was prevented. So this is what we want to do, isn't it? We want to catch it before it reached the patient and that is where the good catch program is very, very important. Now, the concept of good catch is actually nothing new. It is just a near miss incident that refers to the identification and reporting of a potential safety event before it results in harm. The potential thing is which has not yet happened, but will happen if you leave it uh, no, uh, for a certain amount of time. And that's a good catch. And uh, that is what we, are, you know, we want to uh, do. And here are some examples of good catch. I apologize if the text is a bit small. So basically, if you look at in the top, it is, uh, let me just put the laser pointer. So here is a patient care technician who notices nutritional services are delivered a patient tray to an NPO patient and removes before the patient becomes eating, right? This is a good catch. A tire is noted in the sterile packing of a wound dressing change 
and therefore it was not used. Right? Again, another good catch. Nurse obtains urine specimen when preparing to label the container, finds out that the wrong stickers have been given to her. Again, no, these are all examples of good catch. I'm not going to no, read all the rest, but you can get the uh, no, what I'm trying to say, the drift of what I'm going, no, trying to say. These are all errors which could have happened, but because of the alert healthcare professional, they were caught before you know, the error actually happened or reached the patient. So that's that's the example, some examples of good catch. Now, why is it important? So because near misses happen or go, no, much more frequently than actual adverse events. They can actually, uh, actually happen up to 300 times more often. That's quite a lot, isn't it? So each miss is a broken link of a safety chain which you're trying to put around the patient care and that could lead to harm. And focusing on near miss allows us to address the issues even before they happen and therefore they significantly enhance patient safety. So that is the importance. And why should you report it? So it is a hidden opportunity. So it's like the tip of the iceberg. The errors which we see here are very, very small. No, these are the errors. And as I told you, almost 300 times near misses occur under the surface. And unless we report it, they won't come to the surface and they, you know, we won't even know that it happened. And therefore, we can't prevent it. So it's very, very important to report these near misses. So they are the, the hidden part of the iceberg, often overlooked, but very, very important. And this data helps us to reveal patterns and trends, and that helps us to identify the vulnerabilities in a system. And this will help us to put in preventive actions in place so that they don't happen at all in our system. And this is, instead of being reactive, there's no point doing an incident analysis after the error has ha already happened. You are catching the rat by the tail after it, it has gone through the hole. So the near miss reporting is a proactive method because it, it analyzes the incidents even before they have happened. So that's the importance of reporting a near miss. So the near miss and good catch, now you will understand, are two sides of the same coin. So one side of the coin, we used to say it is a near miss. Why is it not a good term? It are often viewed negatively because when you say near miss, you know, you miss something. So it has got a negative connotation to that. And this prompts the fear of blame and you know, of retribution. You now people still, when some mistakes happen, it is very, very common for the seniors to go and shout to the person who caused the uh, error without realizing that it was, you know, there are a lot of system errors which are in the system. Whereas a good catch gives a positive spin and it is the other side of the same coin. So whereas when you say good catch, it is a very positive term and it is a proactive action. So that is what I wanted to emphasize. They're just two terms and just like, you know, uh, there are two sides of the same coin. So why are we you know, harping upon good catch? So the today's webinar, the goal is very, very simple, but it requires a lot of work. So we want to transform the way that our teams think about incident reporting. Because most of the time, incident reporting is fearful. We fear of you not know, getting scolded or attribution. Instead of that, we want to cultivate a culture where reporting is seen as a positive and proactive step. Every reporting, I'm contributing to the patient safety. I'm doing something to enhance the patient safety in our hospital. This is the feeling we should have in our hospital. And that's the reason this small change in terminology is very, very important. Now, we could actually build the safety culture by good catch. I told you, you know, the punitive culture will not allow any incidents to be reported. But this is a start. Where do we start? We start by the good catch program. And by which you can actually turn the missing reports into a cornerstone of your patient safety culture. So it's very, very important. And the safety culture of the organization can actually be changed by this particular program if you just change the terminology from near miss to good catch. Now, unfortunately, as I mentioned earlier, incidents are underreported. 50% it is estimated they are underreported. And there are both system causes and people causes. 
The system is usually more prevalent. Blaming the individuals instead of the system is a main barrier for reporting. And so in, as a result, everybody is concerned about the consequences of reporting and they have fear of punishment. Therefore, why, why, do, why would they want to you know, report it? They will just rather keep it to themselves or push it under the table. There are some you know, um, causes which are related to the staff. One could be inexperience. Others may feel that it is a time-consuming process and it is an attitude problem. They think anyway, they, no, the error did not happen. It's not that important. And as long as the patient is not harmed, I don't think we need to report it. Because of this attitude, and before people think it is time consuming, or maybe because of the experience, and also because of the system where you know, they think they will be scolded and uh, action being taken with them, those are the main reasons that incidents are underreported to more than 50%. So the main reason why the uh, errors are not reported is because of the blame culture. So the more the blame culture, the less the number of incident reports. It has been seen in every hospital around the world. So punitive culture, all of us are very familiar with. Now, whenever somebody makes a mistake, you blame them, you punish them. And there is, as a result, it leads to fear of reporting, erosion of trust, and results in underreporting. An example where a few months ago in a hospital, an ambulance was reversing and in the night and this ambulance actually hit a person who was walking on the uh, on that particular corridor. Immediately, that driver was suspended. But then when the quality team looked at the causes for this error, one, it was found that that area was very poorly lit. Therefore, no, the driver could not see that someone was walking behind the rear um, camera was not working in the ambulance and also the sound alarm. You now, when you put the uh, gear, reverse gear, there is an alarm which comes in many vehicles and that was actually installed in the vehicle, but it was not working. Therefore, it did not warn the pedestrian who was walking there. So there are so many such system problems happening, but ultimately what we do, the immediate reaction is to suspend the driver. So that is the punitive culture where it looks at individuals instead of the system. Now, as opposed to the punitive culture, we have what is known as just culture, just is short for justice. So it is an organizational framework that promotes accountability on one side and learning from mistakes on the other side. So you do hold individuals accountable for their actions. It is not that you will just let, let them away free. On one hand, you hold individuals accountable for the action, but on the other hand, you recognize that most errors are resulting from system failures than somebody intentionally doing something wrong. Nobody wants to do intentionally wrong unless very, very rare instances, right? And the, these are you know, one in a million. But most of the time it is a genuine slip or an error. And most often it happens because of system errors. So the focus of just culture is understanding why an error occurred and how the system can be tweaked up to prevent similar incidents in the future. Now, the key elements of a just culture is balancing accountability with the knowledge that you know, we, errors will happen and we should learn from errors. And the, because of this, there's an environment which the staff feel very comfortable and supported. And they feel confident that they will not be unnecessarily put into any you know, retribution or scolding, but things will be looked into. And then if they lack any skills, training will happen and they'll be supported all the time. It's very, very important key aspects of just culture. Now, just to differentiate between just culture and punitive culture, because we are so much ingrained in punitive culture. Now, that's the fact of life today. So the focus is learning in just culture is learning and improvement, whereas punitive is blame and punishment. In employee engagement, employees are more likely to engage in safety initiatives because they know that they won't be unfairly penalized. Whereas in punitive, they will discourage engagement. They will not report because of fear of pun punishment. And finally, the outcome, it leads to more open, transparent culture that your organization keeps on improving all the time. Everybody is now into that culture, as opposed to punitive culture where everybody is withdrawn. And therefore, this incident reporting does not happen. And the 
safety risks and everything goes unchecked. So this is the main difference and I hope you now we understand from this and try to change. So how one of the very important lessons we have to learn in just culture is how to react to mistakes. There are three ways by which you can react. So one is on this left side, the green side, where it is a genuine human error. So it is a slip or a lapse or a mistake. And you know that person is very genuine. They have been you know, always very good at the job. So it is your responsibility not to blame, but to console such people. Because there is something called second victim. The first victim is the patient who gets harmed. But the guilt of the person who caused the harm, you know, causes harm to the, the person who actually made the harm. I hope you know, I'm using the word harm so much, it is very confusing. I hope it is under, you, know, you understand it. So whenever somebody causes harm and they are really genuine, it, it creates a lot of guilt and they are, that is, they are the second victims. So the second victim should be consoled. This, in the middle, there is an at-risk behavior. You know that this person had made the mistake before. They continue to make one or two mistakes more. You try to you know, uh, coach them and say, this is not the right thing to do. You should focus more. And many of them actually will change. So you recognize at-risk behavior and coach these people. The, on the right side is the reckless behavior where it is a behavioral choice. Whatever you do, the patient, I mean, the person who is working in your healthcare organization seems not to bother about it. And these patients should be disciplined. So it's not that just culture you know, is a, uh, it, it's sort of, you know, hot pot culture. No, it, it sort of burns everybody who touches the hot pot. No, it has got a very graded way of reacting to mistakes. So very, very important uh, problem in India and maybe in many uh, hospitals around the world is the culture in which we have been brought up from childhood. I'm sure most of us will relate to this scene in, in schools. We have, we have all been brought up in this punitive culture in schooling and it continues. Therefore, it requires a very enlightened leadership in the hospital. And I will, as I will point out later, middle management commitment is very crucial and change cannot happen overnight. And it requires slow and consistent effort. So there is, it is quite challenging, but worth the effort. Now, a good catch program works. There are many studies and I want to you know, report this uh, study, which is quoted in the American Data Network. They support this good catch program a lot. They give a lot of resources. And there's one of the case studies is the Fortify Hospital campaign. There are hosp 45 hospitals in that state. We joined together in the Good Cash program. And this le led to almost a 50% increase in near miss reporting. It really you know, boosted the amount of uh, near miss reporting in all the hospitals because of the Good Cash program. So recognizing, reporting, and getting reward, this is the tagline of this uh, Good Cash program. And it really works. Now, these are the eight steps I promised I will talk about in uh, implementing a good catch program. So first is to assess the current reporting culture. So unless you know what is the baseline in which we are now operating in, we cannot know the difference. So first is to assess the current reporting culture, secure leadership by in any quality improvement. You cannot happen without the leadership by in gain middle management commitment. It's a very crucial step, as I'll point out later. Then you educate and empower your staff, simplify the reporting process, implement incentives and recognition, another very important aspect of this program. And all this will foster a just culture. So once you put the ball rolling, then you monitor, analyze and improve continuously. Let's look at each one of them one by one. So as is current reporting culture, you need to evaluate the current incident reporting practices. How good is it? What are you doing? How easy or difficult is it to report? All these things you should look at at the existing reporting practices. Then this will help you to identify barriers to why you are not getting near miss reporting as much as you want to. And then you need to also do a behavioral questionnaire to understand the perception of the staff on safety and blame. What is their perception You know about how they are being treated if they make a mistake or how they will perceive they will be treated if they you know if they make a mistake so it's very very important 
and you do do surveys and interviews to collect feedback and this will give you a very very good starting place of where you are and where you want to go so that's the first step the second important step as i said is secure leadership buying very important to have this leadership support it's good if you already have an enlightened leadership but many times it doesn't happen as you no know, you as a quality professional or a quality champion it is your responsibility to educate the leaders on the value of near miss reporting and ensure that they commit themselves to the culture of safety so i i don't need to say that this is very very important it is crucial because they will only allocate the resources and if you bring them in then other people uh, buy in also will come in naturally so very important step to secure leadership buy in the third one is gaining middle management commitment uh <laughs> i call this the old bandicoot syndrome right so the middle management managers can either be your friends or your villains very very you know crucial people if at all you want to make any change so the middle managers should believe and trust in the change and train the those people to champion the just culture principles and they should model desired behaviors so whatever you may do you may get you know top management support you may train all the staff in the hospital you may do put in posters everywhere you change the desktop uh, you know uh, screen in all you know, computers in your hospital but if the middle management jump on someone who has made a mistake and start scolding them it will never work and because most of the staff will have to report to the middle management so this is a very very crucial step and you will face resistance therefore you have to address the resistance and provide continuous support and without their commitment this program will not succeed so if you are not able to do this crucial step you know you will not proceed to the next one you got to take time and bring on bring them on board before you take the next step so the fourth is actually it may take a lot of effort but actually easy so you provide training on recognizing and reporting near misses emphasize the importance of learning from errors communicate reporting is about improvement and not blame and but this has to be modeled so you may take a you no know, class today but that evening that staff may experience it the other way because they make a mistake and immediately they jumped at you no know, this will not work so encourage open communication encourage feedback so that you get to know from the staff what is happening if they make a mistake so educate and empower staff is the fourth step the fifth step very about again simplifying the reporting process don't no just make it very simple you, you maybe just check boxes except for detailing the incident all the rest can be check boxes so that it is done in the shortest possible time it should be user friendly it should be accessible and now we can use digital tools which is available in the phone and you have to regularly refine and review this process based on the feedback about the difficulty or ease ease, ease of uh, reporting the incidents the sixth step is implementing incentives and recognition this is a very again key aspect because for people to change you, they need to see something out of it what is in it for me is what what the question everybody will ask you talk about this good catch program but the person who's working on the floor will ask what is in it for me why should i do this so therefore it is very important to introduce rewards for consistent reporting need not be you no know, always monetary it can be just a badge or it can be a certificate or just bringing them you no know, in the staff meeting and telling everybody this is the person who actually prevented this mistake happening and you know getting an applause from the senior management and you know that will you know also do so recognize the staff publicly for the valuable contribution use bo both formal and informal recognition methods and this will reinforce positive behavior so every time they do a good catch you know they get some incentive and then that you know creates a positive loop and therefore more and more people will come up and report the near misses and foster a just culture so this is you no know, sort of culmination of what i discussed in the you not know, the last six steps if you do all this then slowly maybe the culture will start changing so it should focus from blame to learning and improvement 
there should be trust very very important so even you know if somebody makes a mistake they should have the trust that the system is fair and the system is always consistent irrespective of whatever department i work in it is the same consistent culture i see in this hospital that should be very very important and educate the all levels of staff don't leave out anybody right from the top management to the lowest member you no know, hierarchy uh, uh, whoever it is you got to tell them that whatever you no know, things you think even it's a mistake which you, they thought they had prevented just let them uh, you know report it and lead by example management must model the desired behavior i know i keep repeating this often of but it is the most important part of this program so finally you know you need to audit it regularly analyze it and improve it right so re review near missed data for trends maybe it's happening in some level of you no know, um, hierarchy maybe in happening in one place in the hospital so these trends will give you, you know, valuable insights and use findings to implement systemic improvements and provide the feedback so very very important this is you now once you make a change because of the feed incident reporting you found that something has to be changed you feedback saying your report actually helped us to do this change and you no know, actually tell them that it really helped so continuously adjust and refine the program for effectiveness so in conclusion friends as i said you no know, good catch itself as a program has the power to change your safety culture so we all face challenges you know as a safety uh, officer you no know, i recently i just yesterday i got a meme from one, my you know safety um, clinical safety officer of how he's just you know sitting there unable to do ever, you know anything and these are all challenges but we need to you know transform challenges into opportunities and the good catch program is such a you no know, uh, program it has turned the challenge of you know less uh, near miss reporting on its head by just changing the perception so it has become an opportunity for people to report good catches and every near near miss is a step towards safety and remember that unless the top management and especially the middle management model this that is every time a mistake happens they know okay accountability on one side and i know that i also have to look at learn from the mistakes of the uh, this uh, which systemic problems which happen from these mistakes and then try to correct it so this balance if they are able to model it then that defines the culture so let us start today and let us be the catalyst for change and uh, thank you so much for your patient listening i hope it was useful and i hope you will go back and uh, convince your leaders convince the middle management and make some change thank you so much